So, in the 90s, VW Audi Group was making some really big moves. They purchased two brands with legendary status and in the process, saved them from an almost certain death. These two brands were Lamborghini and Bugatti, nameplates that carried decades of history and prestige, and names that were known around the world for everything from their speed to their extravagant designs and more. However, VW Audi had to make sure that these brands shocked the world on their debut and showed everyone that not only were they here, but they were going to fight and win against their competition in brands like Ferrari, Pagani, and more. It's to show the world what was to come and to help the teams at Bugatti and Lamborghini research parts that they needed for the cars, they created what is possibly the most advanced and craziest concept car of the millennium, Project Rosemeyer. In order to understand why VW Audi purchased these two honestly legendary brands, we need to backtrack to understand just how bad it got for these two, starting with Bugatti. Now, despite what Bugatti nowadays may want you to believe, it's actually not the original Bugatti company. The OG company was founded all the way back in 1909 and during its run if i'm being honest while they made some honestly amazing cars like the type 35 and the type 73 and more they were also kind of weird the brand was kind of obsessed with doing these weird side quests like making train cars and planes the side quests believe me as cool as i think they are well they cost a lot of money and that paired with the founder ettore bugatti dying in 1947 on top of the fact that post-war europe wasn't exactly in great shape led to the original company closing their doors permanently in 1952 however the brand would be resurrected in 1987 when an Italian investor by the name of Romano Artoli bought the rights out to the Bugatti brand name. He built a compound in Italy to focus on design and development on a new Bugatti. He even brought in people from Bertone, the same guys who designed the Lamborghini Countach, the Lancia Stratos, and a car damn near the top of my dream car list, the Alfa Romeo 2000 GTV, among a whole slew of other legends. They were able to concoct a crazy car, a car that utilized a quad-turbo V12 paired to a manual transmission, all wheel drive and a full carbon fiber chassis. This car was the Bugatti EB110, a car that in my book is easily a top three design car of all time. And an even crazier super sport was dropped the following year in 1992, which had 603 horsepower and not only utilized the same carbon fiber chassis, but also full carbon fiber body panels and had a top speed of 221 miles an hour, making it the fastest production vehicle ever. However, as amazing as this car was, the American and European financial markets were kind of in the shitter. And this drastic affected sales, and the company themselves suffered a lot. It was in the mid-90s when Bugatti died and closed their doors. Three years later though, Volkswagen Audi Group bought out the rights to the Bugatti name and had big plans in store for the brand. However, it wasn't the only historic brand that they scooped up. Now to go over the entire history of Lamborghini, that's a whole video in and of itself. Therefore, I'll focus on events leading up to the VW Audi purchase. So in the late 80s, Lamborghini was actually bought up by the pinnacle of automotive design and performance. Chrysler. Yeah, it's kind of been a left field, but it gave Lamborghini stability. Stability that they desperately needed, as to say they were shaky financially would be an understatement. They had a rough couple of decades, but this was finally going to steer them in the right direction, and it was working pretty well, as with the extra cash, Lamborghini was able to drastically improve development on their Kutash successor, tied with the LM002 as my favorite Lambo, the Diablo. So when the car debuted in 1990, not only was it the fastest production car on the planet, but it was supposed to be the car that pushed Lambo to the mainstream, and finally gave them some stability. See, that's what it was supposed to do, but it did it. Unfortunately, its starting price of $239,000, the modern equivalent of 530 grand, paired with America recovering from a brief recession, meant that a lot of people, even wealthy ones, couldn't even dream of getting their hands on one, causing Lambo to start absolutely hemorrhaging money, and Chrysler dropped them in 1993. This is where, in my opinion, Lambo was definitely closest to closing its doors permanently. As from 1994 to 1997, it gets kind of complicated, as Lambo bounced around different Asian shell companies companies and corporations. It gets really weird and it's definitely more business focused than car focused. All that mattered was that they were getting money but it was only just enough to stay open. And nothing of note really happened except that the Diablo was continuing production. However, in 1998, a severe financial crisis occurred that heavily affected specifically the Asian economic markets, causing Lamborghini's owners to obviously want to sell the brand for some quick cash. And they were in luck though, as Volkswagen Audi Group had been eyeing the brand and at the time, they were on a shopping spree similar to when an Italian housewife gets free range over the credit card. They were buying up brands like Bentley and Bugatti, so Audi and Lamborghini's owners were able to come to an agreement, and VW Audi bought Lambo for around $110 million. Now, like I said before, Volkswagen Audi was adamant of making a big splash with these two legendary brands, but there was a problem. They had never really made any serious supercars up to that point, so they needed to figure out exactly what they were going to do to make supercars for two entirely different brands with two entirely different needs. Lamborghini with crazy designs, not only with engines, but also exterior styles 
styling, and Bugatti is kind of on the total 180 with more elegance, luxury, and absolutely crazy top speeds. So with help from newly formed teams from Lamborghini, Bugatti, Audi, and Bentley, they got to work crafting what is quite possibly the craziest functional concept car of all time. They took a year working nearly non-stop 24-7, crafting an entirely unique and new engine. A quad turbocharged, yes, four turbos, W16, yes, 16-cylinder engine. They told their new teams that money was no object, and it showed, as this marvel of engineering is what they were able to concoct. This is the Audi Project Rosemeyer, and while at first glance, it certainly has a unique face, once you peel back the skin, you realize why it's probably the craziest functional concept car ever. That turbo W16 I mentioned was paired with Audi's legendary Quattro all-wheel drive system, the same basic system that led them to dominate Group B Rally, and get ready for this, it had a six-speed manual transmission. Yeah, effectively a manual Bugatti drivetrain. Now, while it may have been a concept car, Audi made sure it was functional and fully capable of being driven on the road, which makes it just that much cooler. It was an extremely serious performance car, so serious that to save weight, it didn't even come with paint. Yeah, that's not a silver paint job, that's just pure polished aluminum. This car was taken so seriously by the team that this was the first car that ever used rear-facing cameras for rear-view mirrors. This is a trend that is now used on cars that emphasize top speed like the McLaren Speedtail. However, keep in mind, this Audi debuted in 2000, more than two decades before the Speedtail. And don't think that just because it was a concept that they did shortcuts on the interior, as this interior is absolutely stunning. The steering wheel definitely calls back to the race cars of old, and I wish more manufacturers had steering wheels like this, as it looks 11 out of 10 amazing. It had a gated manual and a full carbon fiber dash which was used to help save weight. That, paired with no paint and extreme aero design such as a long sweeping front windshield, it was obvious that the goal of this car was to go as fast as humanly possible in a straight line. It wasn't just the aero though, as the W16 had 700 horsepower, and all those things put together helped propel this car to an estimated top speed of 225 miles an hour, absolutely blistering for 2000. So with all of that, this car obviously succeeded in not only showing the world what VW Audi was willing to do to make a supercar, but also massively helped with R&D for their future cars. But maybe this car worked a little too well, as interest in orders started absolutely pouring in like a busted dam. Everyone, and I mean everyone, wanted one of these, and to be honest, who the hell could blame them? However, unfortunately, Audi came out and stated that the production cost would be just too high to justify production. But most people in the know agree that the real reason was because if they released the Rosemeyer, it would directly compete with the new Bugatti in the works, which would effectively be the equivalent of shooting yourself in the foot. But despite all of that, like I said before, this car effectively made Bugatti, as the engine and drivetrain used in this car was essentially copy-pasted into the first Bugatti made under VW Audi Group, along with a lot of exterior design elements, especially the front end with the oval-shaped front grille. The Rosemeyer is widely seen as the effective Veyron concept, the Veyron being not only the first car made by Bugatti under VW Audi's ownership, but also what is widely considered as the world's first true hypercar. Now I know that the Chiron concept is a thing, but this Rosemeyer was before that. Anyways, how did this concept car effectively make Lamborghini what it is today though? Well, the exterior styling for one looks awfully similar to what would end up being the Lamborghini Gallardo's cousin, the Audi R8, especially the rear half of the vehicle. It looks so incredibly similar, I can't state it enough. The Gallardo was the first Lambo made under VW Audi ownership, and it didn't disappoint. The gated manual design from the Rosemeyer was copy-pasted into the Gallardo and the R8, and in case you didn't know, the Gallardo, while not the flagship Lamborghini at the time, became the best-selling Lambo of all time, as it served as a cheaper Lambo compared to its older brother, the Murcielago. The Gallardo shared the same just about everything with the R8, so in a way, the Rosemeyer not only made Bugatti, but also Lamborghini, arguably making it not only one of the coolest concept cars ever made, but also one of the most influential and important cars ever made, period, as it saved two of the most legendary car makers of all time.